Hi everybody and welcome to the Electronic Harassment Parent Coalition of Palm Springs, California. My name is Kevin Bond. I'm the owner of this site and I just wanted to say that uh, I'm happy that the blog has been getting so much attention lately. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of love goes out to the people on my team that have been working um, super duper hard to try to get this going and a big kiss out to everybody. I just wanted also to say that um, I have finally posted the Nathan Baca interview um, on the blog so you can see that in the middle of what was supposed to be my rape investigation you can see that the police weren't doing anything nothing so now I want everybody to understand that first of all a rape case is never cold okay and they let it all rely on DNA well if the police were relying on Stephen Fry not knowing Peter DiMartino I've shown you now that there are text messages from Stephen to me talking about how Peter was taking him on vacation now how could that be um, I don't understand uh, when I look at that video what the hell the police were trying to do um, but I do know that it's not the only time they've done that because if you look at what happened to Christopher Monty the other informant in the case that we work on he also was blasted in the news as being a homeless man and being you know look crazy or whatever and it's just a bunch of bull if a woman in Palm Springs was raped and she reported it and went on the news trying to look for the person that was doing that there is no way that that police department would have gotten away with saying that she had mental issues there is no way that that department would have gotten away with saying in the middle of a rape investigation anything about anything they can't say they aren't doing anything and they certainly aren't doing the community any service by saying that there isn't anyone what I want everybody to understand is this we are definitely treated differently in Palm Springs and I think that that's sad I think that when Palm Springs does well it's because the gay community is doing well and I want everybody to understand that we have a primarily gay city council and for a city council to sit there and see something like that on the news and have a victim of a sexual crime go through that is absolutely indicative of the pervasive attitudes that we have in our police department when it comes to crimes against gay people especially electronically harassed gay people because they don't want any attention going to the people that are being put in jail illegally see I reported that rape and then all of a sudden I started getting arrested in numerous times and then there weren't any convictions and then just like in the Christopher Monty case if you looked on the story on the internet for the Nathan Baca interview you saw someone went on there and said even losers get raped and this is indicative of what we go through when you talk to anybody that has had anything that goes on in the news that has been electronically harassed this girl who does this likes to go on to the internet and then pat herself on the back for the horrible things that she does and to me it's really really sad to think that this is what she does now I'm going to move on to something else but I want always to, to let you guys know I never ever accused this girl's brother of anything at the time she took it upon herself allegedly to contact the police and do this to say oh well he has mental issues I've never met the police officer that made those comments and certainly that police officer was not aware that I was a police informant so I don't know if the police department thinks that they have 
informants that have mental issues. But they certainly didn't think I had mental issues when they asked me to do that job. Think about it. They use me as an informant and then they go on the news and say they have that I have mental issues. Do the police in Palm Springs use people with mental issues for informants? Think about it, Sergeant Anderson. Do you really, really think that that was a good idea? Also, I'd like to um, call attention to uh, something else that my team has been working on for a long time. Apparently, when this girl left and abandoned her apartments in the Palm Springs area, she left behind a lot of the things that have been stolen in the area. And one thing that I find odd, but apparently is one of the biggest things, are stolen family photo albums. And in these photo albums, she's taken these pictures and taken the face off of someone and superimposed her own face so as she could look like a member of the family of the person that she harassed. I don't know what good that does her and I certainly don't understand why somebody would do that other than you want to not be a part of your own family. So there's that. And then um, today I also posted some stuff about Adopt a Highway, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, the other night I wrote something about, you know, I've had to keep my own side of the street clean and, and that's part of being a sober person and, and part of being a productive member of society. But I have a lot of friends that are electronically harassed victims of this crime. And, you know, this girl goes online and she, you know, basically pretends to be them and makes them look like less than what they really are and my friends don't deserve that so not only am i keeping my seat side of the street clean i've had to adopt a highway and take in all their streets too because if you look at what happened to christopher monty and you look at anthony davieri and you look at jonathan mendenhall and you look at other people these people don't have a voice and i know what it's like to not have a voice so my point to the Palm Springs Police Department and Sergeant Mitch Spike, who I did file a complaint against, and I've never received any kind of apology for that kind of action, um, is you obviously do not know who I am. And you obviously do not know the kind of experience that I have. And you obviously do not know that I've worked with law enforcement for a better part of a decade in the federal government for you to go on the news and give a comment like I have mental issues when you don't even know who I am and I am the victim of a rape because I did get hepatitis C I was tested beforehand and after and you can see when I get it now I don't know who you are and I really, really don't respect people that make those kind of comments about any kind of victim of crime. But you need to understand, Mr. Spike, that I am an informant for your department. And if you go on the news and say that I have mental issues, then it calls into question the judgment of Sergeant Anderson. You need to understand something else. I'm a highly educated man. I've been working for a long time for a lot of really great people and none of them think that that comment is something that your department should stand behind. So I just want to let everybody know, looking back at that interview, yes, it does make me mad. In fact, I think it's really, really illegal. And what you tried to do was take away my ability to talk to my community about a problem that we all know is going on but you don't. That just tells you how out of touch Sergeant Mitch Spike is with the gay community. I just wanted to say one more time, I love you, Christopher. I know you feel the same way that I do about what this department said about you on the news. And Mrs. Monty, I want you to understand that I did that interview to keep from other people from being infected. And I know a lot of people who know that this is what's going on. So Sergeant Mitch Spike, you get the thumbs down of the day.
because you have absolutely no clue what you did to the gay community by saying the things that you said. So that's the report for tonight. And I just want everybody to know that I'm working really hard still. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.